certainly want to wish all of our fathers a happy Father's Day. We certainly thank God for Deacon uh, Robinson this morning. As the young folks say, he did that today. <laughs> and uh, we're thankful for his love. God our Father, we come in Jesus' name. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you, oh God. For you first loved us, oh God. God, uh, you sent your only begotten Son, oh God. Master, as a sign of your love, oh God, to live, to die, and ultimately to be raised from the grave. And now sit at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions on our behalf. Father, forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, oh God. That God, we ask now that you would send a word, oh God, that will be a blessing to your people, oh God. Oh God, we know your word is already blessed. But oh God, as it go forth, let it not return unto you void. But oh God, let it accomplish all that you set it forth to do. God, we ask now that you hide us behind the cross, oh God, that others may not see me, but that they may see you and glorify the Son. God, we thank you for this, and we praise your name for it. For we ask it all in the name of he that is able. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. In the spirit of Father's Day, I want to share with you from a familiar passage of scripture uh, found in the book of Psalms, uh, Psalms uh, number one, the very first psalm. <clears throat> I want to read verses 1 through 3. Psalm verse number 1, a chapter of Psalm number 1, beginning at verse 1. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor seat in the nor sit in the seat of the scornfuls, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in its season, and its leaf will not wither, and whatsoever he does will prosper. Amen, amen. I want to talk about a, a formula of success, a formula for success. We're blessed this morning as we celebrate fathers and uh, we certainly thank God for men uh, who lived uh, to, uh, to be good fathers, uh, fathers that uh, respected the plan and the purpose of God and, uh, and used God's uh, purpose and plan as a backdrop for their lives. In this uh, psalm, uh, it is the very first psalm. The psalm, as we know of, are, are hymns, are songs of, of praise that, that have been ministered among the, the children of Israel. And, and in this first psalm, uh, God uses some powerful imagery uh, in it to express his love and his relationship with that one that he has created in his own image. And so he offers us this uh, opening of, of this psalm. See, he says, blessed is the man. And, uh, one of the translations uh, uh, argued that this is a sense of a happy, happy man. Uh, not because of who he is, but because of who God is. And God declares this thing. He says, blessed is the man who. And he argues that there is a formula designed here. Uh, but it doesn't just come because you say you're blessed. He says you're blessed because it is one who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scornful. He argues you all that if we're going to be a blessed man, if we're going to be called a blessed father of this generation, he suggests to us uh, that, number one, that we've got to watch our paths. 
For he says that uh, he who walks, and, and, and this y'all, I just got three little pointers here in, in the midst of this, this path. Uh, I want to look at his stroll. I want to look at his, his stand. And then I want to look at his, his seat. Uh, for he says, blessed is he who strolls, he who who walks it. They're on their way somewhere. And I'm going to argue, a blessed man is always on his way somewhere. He, he's about the movement of God. And he says that his move is not now. He says it's not in the counsel of the ungodly. He, he says that, that if this man is truly going to be blessed of God, he says that you've got to be careful of where you stroll, stand, and seek it. And he says that uh, uh, what, what, where, we, where we walk has everything to do with what we believe. And I'm going to suggest my brothers and sisters, he says that we are not to be that of the ungodly. Uh, uh, he says because our belief stance ought to be differently. Uh, but then he says that you've got to watch where you stand. Uh, stand has an idea of lingering. Stan has an idea of not just believing it, but behaving in such a way. And he says that our behavior ought not to be that of the sinners. He says you ought to be different. You ought to walk differently. You ought to talk differently. Listen, your behavior ought to be different. And I'm going to suggest your behavior ought not just be that in the church, but your behavior ought to be that in the streets. Your behavior ought to be the same way on your job. Your behavior ought to be that way even in your house where nobody else is watching you. God says that, that, that you ought to stand for something. And I'm going to argue, my brothers and sisters, he says that you ought not do it in the way uh, of, of sinners. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, he says that uh, not only ought you to believe it, which affects your behavior, he says, but then it will affect your belonging. And he says that, uh, that nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Uh, he, he, he argues here uh, that, that there are those who, who do not believe God, who repel against the beliefs of, of the statutes, the law of God. They, they have nothing to do with God. And he says that you've got to be careful that you don't belong, that you don't behave, and, and that you don't set yourself in a position that's far away from God. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, whatever your pathway of life taking you, I want to encourage you all, be sure you know who the leader is. Because if the leader has not God, it's doomed from the very beginning. And I don't care where you stand and where you declare you are. If God is not your shepherd, if God is not the one that leads you and order your steps, you've got to rethink your path. This I want to suggest, my brother and sister, Foreman says that you must uh, have a good path. But then, then secondly, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, just in this same text, uh, I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, that you ought to know your uh, potential, that you ought to know uh, your practices. He says, uh, uh, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says that if you're going to be uh, a disciple of God, if you're going to be a great man of God, if you're going to be a great father to your nation, I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, he says not only ought you to know your path, but then you ought to have some practices. He says that, uh, but his delight is in the law. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, there are so many folk that have their delight in so many other practices. But I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, there's something powerful when the man of God, when the father leads his family based upon the law of God. He says that, though I may not know it, he says, I meditate on it day and night. And this is every night, and then. It's a good joy to know that the Lord's word breathes within our hearts. We may not always walk around with the Bible, but the word ought to be in our minds. The word ought to be in our head. The word ought to be in our heart. He says, I get delight about it. I rejoice about it. I am energized by, by the word of God. When uh, Every night and then, uh, my wife, before I get up to preach her, she gives me this uh, juice. And uh, it is, uh, uh, it's a part of this, uh, yeah. Uh, but it's, in other words, it's supposed to help me, energize me uh, in, my, in my energy to preach. 
And, uh, and, 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 and every now and then it helps me something awesomely. And uh, I can't think of the name of it at the moment, uh, but, but it does. It, 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 it does have, it's called ninja red, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a, a mineral, and, and it's designed for something healthy. But listen, I, I thank the Lord for my wife, and I thank the Lord for, for ninja red, but oh, my brothers and sisters, it's just something about the word. When it begins to ring in your heart, it energizes you to do something outside of yourself. God fills you with this Holy Spirit, and they allows you to declare even that that you hadn't seen. He argues it in that my delight is in the Lord, and I meditate on it day and night. And listen, he, he, he goes to the Father. He says uh, uh, that, that, that it's, it's not my law. Oh, help me somebody. But it's God's law. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, that, that, that America would be different today if we trusted God's law. America wouldn't have such divisions today if we followed God's law. Listen, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your part. Listen, I just want to argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we have this worldly image and we have this worldly desire and we think we know it all, and, and we seek from president, we seek from uh, the courts, and, but listen up, my brothers and sisters, if God is your shepherd, allow him to lead you, and listen, I, I, I have this on good authority uh, to my brethren, he will lead you and your family if you learn to lean upon him. Listen, listen, he argues that, that not only he has, uh, does he have our past, uh, not only uh, ought we do it by his practices, uh, but the third piece of this prayer is that, uh, 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 of this formula is that uh, God gives us prosperity. Uh, the text says, uh, He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season, and its leaf will not wither. And whatsoever He does will prosper. Would you allow me just a few minutes of practice? And I promise you, I'm done. Uh, the Bible says that if you're going, if you're going to be good in this, he, he says if you're going to be a, a great man of God, if you're going to be a good father that tends to his children, he says number one, he says that you got to be uh, uh, prominent. Uh, he says that number one, we've got to be like a tree. Uh, we, we've got to have some prominence about it. So we've got to be situated. We, we can't be moving here and moving thus and changing our mind here. So, listen, our families need a man that will guard their family, who's stable in all of his ways and all of his doings. He says that we need some prominence in our lives. Uh, but then uh, we need some permanence in our lives. He says, but it's a tree that is planted. And oh, blessed be God. Thanks be to God that, that, that sometimes, y'all, uh, uh, in marriages, uh, uh, husbands want to depart because they can't take it. Sometimes in families, husbands move away. But listen, thanks be to God for a man of God that is planted, uh, that is fulfilling the sources of his family. He says that not only is he planted, but the Bible says not only is he permanent, but the text says that he's positioned right there. And listen, the Bible says, by the rivers of water. Now I'm going to argue, my brothers and sisters, no real tree will ever furnish itself properly if it's not getting the right kind of nourishment. And, and, and so he says that, I, I, I want you to see this imagery, uh, that he is, he is permanently planted by the rivers of water. God already has a plan for you. Don't get frustrated. Don't get disembodied. He says simply, know that all that you need I will supply. He says that, 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 that not only ought you be positioned right, but he says that you ought to have productivity. And I, I want to suggest this, y'all, is that productivity doesn't always happen all the time. Uh, sometimes we ask God for this and that, and sometimes God doesn't always reveal himself like we wanted to. Uh, I, I grew up in the neighborhood, and uh, my grandmother had all kinds of trees uh, in the yard, and particularly all kinds of fruit trees, and, 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 and there were peaches and pears and figs and plums and all the sort. But you know one thing I discovered? Uh, that every pear tree didn't bloom at the same time. Uh, every, every limb didn't 
have fruit on it all at the same time. But listen, if you keep on watering that thing, and if you just wait on God, God in his own season, he's going to allow it to produce what he planned for it to do. And I'm going to suggest this, y'all. Sometimes we're looking in other folks' yards, and we look in other folks' vineyards, and because we're not receiving what somebody else receiving, we think our fruit is damaged, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to honor my brothers and sisters. Wait on God. God has put you in a place, and he's desired fruit to be there, but he's used you to be a witness of it. He says, in his own season. And I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes we've got to train our children to remind them that God may not always come right when you want him to, but somebody here is a witness to know sometimes God will show up in the 23rd hour and 59 minutes, but God will show up, and whenever he shows up, he's always right on time. Listen, the text says uh, that, that, that he brings forth fruit there. And he does it in his own way. And listen, y'all. And, and, and one of the last things he says, and his leaf shall not wither. I want to argue, y'all, that sometimes you have some trees in season that leaves dry up and they fall off. In some seasons, uh, the leaf moves from green to red and from red to yellow and it, it dissipates. Uh, but then you have some other trees, so oh, blessed be God, that no matter what comes what may, they're always green. They are evergreen. And this is, and I would argue, my brothers and sisters, sometimes, y'all, what gets us in this thing is that sometimes uh, we have to be well weathered uh, trees. Because, see, sometimes some trees fall because the weather comes and blows them down. And they are not dug deep enough. Their roots have not had a chance to dig deep enough. And, and, and listen, and sometimes the storm will come and knock them down. But listen, a tree that's been well planted and well weathered and, and growing in its own season, the roots will go deep and deep and deep. And listen, and come whatever way it shall stay. I'm going to argue, my brothers and sisters. I pray, I pray to God that you are building a relationship, your home and your family, even in your own life, that something that was, is everlasting, something that will continue to build and build and build. But listen, I'm going to argue, y'all. It don't just come by osmosis, but you've got to be willing to spend some time with God. Listen, you've got to spend some time with his word. And that's the reason why the writer, he said, that I meditate on it day and night. Oh, even though when I don't understand, I know I have a father who can. Listen, the final note here. He says, not only his with his, uh, his leaf will not wither, but the final word he says, and whatever he does, the Bible says, will prosper. And I'm gonna, I want to suggest to you, y'all, that I've learned this to be true, y'all, that sometimes it doesn't look like it's going to add up to much, but you keep on, keep on walking with God. Listen, let God finish his battle. Let God finish what he's doing in you. And listen, and the Bible says, and whatsoever he does, and listen, that's the that's old, that's old saint's way of, of saying it. And, and, and they declare uh, that God will get all that he has in store for you. But listen, I'm going to argue, y'all, that it doesn't come with me giving up. It doesn't come with me deciding to walk another way. But listen, y'all, it, it, it comes when I decide for my life that God is the one I choose, that God is the one uh, that I will live. And y'all, I've I learned this, y'all. When we testify, when we go through it ourselves, y'all, we can tell our children. We can tell our daughters and our sons that you don't have to bow down to everything that the daughters do. We can give wide instructions that, that we can share with our sons, uh, e even in this climate of the world today, uh, as to how they ought to be uh, and, and act evil with police officers. And, and, and yet I pray that there will come a day that we don't have to tell our sons anything different than the white sons, uh, that we will all be able to tell each of one of our children the same message. But then, then my brothers and sisters, I would argue that we ought to have a word for our daughters. And I'm, I want to suggest y'all uh, that, that you can't tell them what you have done 
And I want to suggest y'all that we have to be able to tell our daughters uh, how beautiful they are so that when, yeah, 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 when some no good brother shows up and, and, and steals her heart because for the first time she's told how beautiful she is. Listen, sometimes you got to remind them whose they are. You got to remind them the love that God has upon their lives. And, and listen, and then we got to remind them, my brothers, that sometimes even when they fail, uh, that we still love them. We got to remind them that sometimes even when the rug has been pulled out, listen, you'll still find a relationship with me. Why? Because I, I love you. I would argue. The reason why we can do that is because we are serving a God that loved us. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. This is Terry taking a story, y'all, and I promise you I'm done. A story that was written that was told about a, 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 a young boy uh, who grew up in this town and uh, his mother. Uh, became uh, pregnant and, and uh, uh, she she moved to a southern town and uh, uh, she didn't know what to do and so she found a job uh, at a deli and there uh, uh, she served as a waitress and, uh, and and because she had no uh, no money for child care uh, her boss allowed her to bring her baby boy and he had a play kid in the corner of the deli and, and, and every day customers would come in and, and they would play with him and they would talk with him and he grew up and, uh, and they, they never saw a father and, and, and many of them would begin to whisper who is his dad and, uh, and, and they would ask her but as he grew older some people would ask the boy uh, uh, what is your daddy's name who is your daddy and, and the, the little boy didn't know how to take it because he didn't know who his daddy was and so uh, by the time he made it to sixth or seventh grade uh, 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 he had begun to hear about a new preacher that came to town and people were talking about him and so he he made his way to the church and, and uh, he would wait until the song service began and he would sneak in the back door of the church and sit on the back row of the church and and, uh, and listen, and he was just amazed at the teaching uh, of the pastor. He was amazed at the stories that he told about Jesus. He was amazed at, at all of the religious uh, 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 blessings that were shared. And, and, uh, but the little boy had one thing. Uh, he was tired of people asking him who his daddy was. And so when the choir sang the last song, the little boy would slide out the back door. Well, one Sunday he came in and, uh, while the choir was singing and sat in the back seat and, and listen, he heard the preacher preaching and the choir began to minister at the end of the church service. And, and, and he got so caught up with the choir singing, his heart was set afire with the singing of the choir. So all of a sudden he recognized the choir and stopped singing. And people were walking out the back door. He was amazed and didn't know what to do. And so he tried to hide and move himself to the crowd. Uh, but all of a sudden, a man put his hands on his shoulder and said, son, where are you going? And you always get out of here quickly. And, uh, and, and we want you to sit around and, and meet some of the people. And he said, son, what's your name? He recognized the voice of the man and uh, uh, right behind that robe. Uh, he, he recognized that it was the preacher of the church and, and, uh, and the preacher asked him in his name and he said, my name is Billy. Billy uh, looked at the preacher and looked at him in his eye and the preacher says, you don't have the last name, but what's your daddy's name? The little boy looked and he pondered as to what he could say. He finally put his hand underneath his chin and, and the preacher looked at him in his eyes and finally the preacher said, son, that's all right. I, I know what you're saying. Uh, you are one of the children of God. You are a child of God. And listen, he says, and for that, we celebrate you today. That boy walked away living differently from that day on because anybody else that asked him what's his name, he tells them, I'm a child of God. I don't care what you've been through and how long you got to go through it. Listen, you may not have a daddy that put, your, put his hands upon you. You may not have had a daddy to drop the law of God upon you. But listen, know that you still have a father 
and he looks high and he sits there low. He guides your feet everywhere you go. You have a father who cares for you. Yeah. And I would argue, he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son on your behalf. And the Bible says that if you confess it with your mouth and believe him in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. I would argue, my brothers and sisters, if you've never confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you ought to do it today. Hear him today and watch him make your life brand new. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for your word, oh God. Uh, Master, we thank you, oh God, that we can meditate on the point of day and night, oh God. Bless every family under the sound of my voice. Oh God, bless those, oh God, uh, uh, that have uh, uh, lost relationships with their father. But let them know that they still have a, a heavenly father uh, that seeks to know them, seeks to bless them, seeks to honor, honor them. And oh God, I pray, oh God, uh, that you would draw men, women, boys, and girls unto yourself. God, we thank you for this time and we give you praise. We give the glory for it. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. This invitation is extended wherever you are. Listen, you don't have to be in this building, but wherever you are, on this Father's name, call in the name of Jesus and ask him into your heart. A name I love to hear. I love.